Well, hi and welcome to the cow paddocks out at Yarra Glen. <sighs> Another adventure out here. Today I am talking about the welcome swallow. And man, aren't they a challenge. They're so fast, they move erratically, but that's what draws me in. The challenge of trying to get a shot. And what I've found over the years is the certain conditions certain places that we can actually get consistent shots of them especially with the r6 now that it has a, a lot better focusing system with focus tracking and all that sort of stuff is on water now the reason is the focusing system can't distinguish what you want to focus on um, when you're on land itself because it blends into the scenery so we're on flat paddocks a nice bit of grass it's not too high and we have tree line it comes up to well here comes up to about uh, eight to ten meters that's all a distraction and that's the area that you're going to find the bird in the most because it's swooping across the top of the grass looking for insects and yet, it's, the camera just can't deal with that. It's really, really hard unless it flashes its belly. And the, the main problem with them, with this welcome swallow is, the speed that they travel at is very, very rare. They're actually slowing down enough for the camera to go, oh, that's what you want. Yeah, so we come up from the, the grass to that tree line and it just disappears for the camera it can't see it we can but he can't see it we come up into a blue sky no worries we're back in action again as long as we have the camera set up right so the best place for me i find is on the water now it's better if it's glassy uh, it's a, it looks better in the image you know better background but you know sometimes a little bit of uh ripple action on the top with wind can add a little bit to it as well a bit more drama to the shot but we have that problem of the bank and the actual trees being a problem when it comes up above the water so when it's down low on the water and it's away from the bank a fair bit that's that's where we want them that's the best spot because we're away from the reflections in the water which are just as much a distraction as the bloody trees in the bank so I just follow them from a distance that's you know it's always the best way because you're settled as they come right up to you camera's more settled as well with its focusing system and we can all enjoy <laughs> a little bit of action for a while I don't know about you, but I can't uh, look down the barrel of the camera for too long. And with the welcome swallows, you have to spend so much time following them up and down, up and down. And what it does to me, my eyes go. So I'll take my eye off the camera, look up, see what's going on. And things are a little blurry and it takes a while for my eyes to come back now if I do this for half an hour following the welcome swallow up and down and even having little breaks um, I get eye strain and then I'm really stuffed so you, know, you start getting a headache and it just causes dramas so I've had to constrain myself do little spurts and really make sure that I'm looking after my eyes as much as possible it is hard though it's really hard not to uh, you know, get caught up in the hype of following them around and trying to get that beautiful shot. Now especially on those rare days when they're slowing down. Now, it seems to me that there's a certain insect that they have to slow down for. So whether it's windy or whether it's um, you know, beautiful conditions like this they'll slow down for this certain insect I can't see what it is but um, that's 
what I'm picking up on. They're the days when you only get beautiful shots exactly how you want them. Yeah, and weaving like this because they're slowing down enough that where my reaction can uh, get them and so can the focusing system. So it's just uh, keep coming back to the same spots where you know they are week after week, month after month until you get that rare day. I had one the other day but and here's the shots but the sun was on the other side where they were coming up to me and uh, I couldn't get across to the other side of the uh, creek because it was it was completely flooded there was no way for me to get around to the other side. Now here's one I took recently in the fog here this tree behind me I think camera can yeah camera can pick it up it's that one just there just there in the fog that looked amazing and I had the water it's just uh, from this dam here it continues around the back of the camera and uh, looking across at that and I thought oh wow that, that's a great landscape shot looks beautiful in the fog it's all isolated yet yeah, just really looks good now if I could get a bird or something in in the water in front of me I could include that and it just make the scene it look awesome uh, and the welcome swallows were here and they were flying past me I thought, oh, if I could get a few in the scene, it might work out. I stood there for quite some time, and in the end, I, I had to leave. I couldn't stay any longer. I didn't get exactly what I was after. But here's a couple of shots that uh, are all right. They're a little hard to really see the bird properly. They don't come up close enough to me to be a big part of the image, but that's what we get. But today, they are moving very fast. And there's not many of them, there's only a handful. They're more up that end than they are down here. Uh, it's perfectly positioned where they're running up and down the edge of the bank here where, for the sun to be behind me. So I'm going to move on over there now and uh, start taking some photographs and see how I go. I'm not having a lot of luck at the minute. The welcome swallows are going on the other side of the uh, dam. And coming back and cruising up behind me I move down there they move up here <laughs> oh here you go right now as I'm talking one's going past over in those uh, dead uh, blackberries is where the chicks are just in here so the ducklings are in there mum and dad flew off and they've just come back and they snuck around the back of the trees there Yeah, we're not having fun. It's a beautiful, flat, flat day. Uh, the ones, the shots that I'd really love to get is when they like that on the angle coming at you. Looks fantastic, you know. Any any sort of like sweeping move like that, and also uh, when they're taking a drink of water. That, oh, I love them. You get reflection of the bird. Looks awesome. Now on the other side here, you, can, you probably can't see it, but there's a grebe keeping its distance from me. The other day it was um, coming up fairly close, I got a couple of shots. But today, no, they're all, they've all decided they're not going to give me anything. <laughs> never mind, never mind. I'll just keep hanging around here a little bit. Actually, there's another little dam further over that way. And maybe, maybe they might be over there as well and they might give me a better chance. But yeah, a lot of times they just cruise up and down like this close to the bank and uh, can be really good. But not today. Oh, there's a couple of ducks flying up in the sky there. No, they're going away. <laughs> right. 
So it's just one of those days and you know, it's, it's it for now, a little bit of breeze coming on. It is, it's been really glassy and beautiful conditions if you can get them to do the right thing by you. Okay, the ducks are coming back. I'm going to try and see if I get a shot if they do. Yep, they're coming right at me. Here we go. Let's have a look. Is it going to be any good? No. No. They're too far away from my lens then. Never mind. We'll keep trying. Here comes uh, Welcome Swallow. No, turned away. Gone back again. Good on you. Yeah, it's just one of those days. Well, I've moved over to the other dam and it's yeah, it's no go no go here today it's just not the right conditions they're starting to go over the paddocks now so there's obviously around the waterway there's just not enough insects uh, to, that are flying around bummer well i've moved down to the end of the main dam where i started from because they're back down here man they're doing my head in look at look at that look at that speed that they're doing they're cruising like inches over my head and i can't get a shot here comes one yeah so this turn so quickly away from me as you're about to get the camera to your face bloody frustrating come on guys or even just land on the post over here i'd love that post there it's uh it's just got everything there, you know, it's an old post, it's got bits of barbed wire on it and stuff. They sit on that. I got one shot the other day. Uh, I like something a lot better. Uh, yeah, waffling. Anyway, <laughs> that's what's happening at the minute. I'm not getting anything. Look at this beautiful baby magpie. It's standing like a statue, so it thinks it's hidden from me. Can't see. But guess what, mate? I can see you. I am constantly amazed whenever I go out to shoot a subject that I'm interested in that I don't get anything of that. I get something else. Oh, on the way back then, that was just awesome to get some beautiful photographs of a little bird. I've seen it before, but I'm not quite sure what they're called. So when I go home, I'll find out and I'll splash it up on the screen here so you can find out what it is. All right, so <laughs> as I was inching my way up to, sorry about the wind on the, on the camera and the mic, but uh, we'll just keep persevering. As I walked up to that little bird, I used all my skills of not presenting myself as a threat, just slowly making my way up, watching its posture for any sign of it being nervous about me getting up too close and that it would fly off. So watching that, I managed to be able to get up within three meters of it, which was perfect for that size bird, yeah, only a tiny little thing. Um, but yeah, just used all my skills to make sure that I didn't frighten it. So it stayed there, and as I went to do that last foot forward, a quail flew out two meters in front of me and flew across my eyesight here. And as it got to the corner of my eye, because I stayed on my subject, it uh, hovered because it wasn't sure about where it was going to go and hide. I thought about taking that shot. I could have done it quite easily. But I had worked so hard and it's got this bird to be comfortable with me being up close to it. I stayed on it, my original subject, and I got my shots. Now I have learnt this over the years from photographing the Agile Antichinus, waiting hours for it to come out. And as it's about to come out, a bird will land right near me, beautiful pose. And I've gone to take a shot of that. It's run, it's flew off with my movements. The Agile came out, it got spooked by my movements and it went. So you end up with nothing. So that's what I do these days. I stay focused, I stayed on my subject and I got the shots. At the expense of missing. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's just in hindsight. I might have got it. 
but I might have scared the other bird away. So they're the lessons you learn over the years. All right, as I left there, got some beautiful shots of that bird. Actually, I should point out, I was hoping that it would start doing a call, open its mouth, because a, let's face it, a bird sitting on a branch can be pretty boring. I love action and it gave me some beautiful poses there with it chirping away. It was awesome. So thank you little bird. Uh, but yeah, on the way back a little bit further, about 50 meters away from that, was that little magpie. Baby magpie. Sitting up straight. Pretending it was a post and hoping that I wouldn't see it. But uh, yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> Got some nice shots of it. Uh, yeah, they're not fantastic at feathers are a bit rough looking and all that but no got some shots for the library all right I've waffled on again far too much and it's time for me to stop well that's the end of this video hope you enjoyed it now if you'd like to subscribe to my channel click on my pretty little face just in the bottom right hand corner screen hit the little bell you'll get notification whenever I do anything else and if you like this video and you'd like to hit that like button that would be awesome it should help my channel grow now I have been on YouTube for 10 years so the 15th of this month September 2021 my channel turned 10 years of age it hasn't grown like I hoped I'm still a baby uh, channel as far as that goes so if you can help me out with a like if you liked it don't click on it just for the sake of me telling you but if you liked it click on it would be awesome if you'd like to go and have a look at all the other crazy and mad things I've done in the past, click on my icon right here at the end of this video. It'll take you my channel. I talk about photographing, filming in a forest environment, coming out in the open paddocks like this, uh, go on adventures, and I take you with me. So go and have a browse. There'll be something there of interest to you, I am sure. Sorry about the wind on the mic. Hopefully, this is the first time I've used the Rode mic on my Osmo action camera. So hopefully it's okay. And it's going past. Ah! Another bird game track. Awesome day. Thanks for watching. And remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife. And I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.